So it's crazy to think that this caused so many issues, but I'm glad we found it. Welcome back to The Decent Garage. In today's video, we're gonna be doing some much needed maintenance and some diagnostics on the OG crew cab. Near the end of this video, I'm gonna be asking for some of you guys' help. If you are kind of a suspension guy on these first gens, we need to get the spring squared away on Long Bid Larry. So stay tuned till the end of the video. I'm gonna show you what we're looking at and I need your help figuring it out. Now, Long Bid Larry is here in the garage, so we don't have room to do it in the garage and it is 20 degrees outside, but we're gonna make do. So first of all, before we head out there, we gotta switch Crocs to the insulated Crocs. There we go, let's head out there and I'll show you what we're gonna do first. So first, we have an issue that started yesterday randomly. Let me uh, hook the battery back up and you'll see why I had the battery disconnected. My wife went out last night, she got home, she pulled into the driveway and texted me and said, are your brake lights supposed to be on? And sure enough, let's see if you can see it out here in the light. The brake lights are on. The key is not in the truck. It's not the brake light switch. I've reached in there and pressed the button on the switch thinking that maybe it just wasn't pushing it hard enough. That's not it. So here's a list of the things that I think it potentially could be. So first I thought maybe it's the headlight switch. That's pretty common for the headlight switch to go out. The lights still do work fine. The other thing I thought is maybe it is the uh, Turn signal switch, that's another common spot where you'll lose that and it'll cause some of these funky light issues. I'm also gonna check the flasher for the hazards because I noticed when I turn the hazards on, it just makes the indicator light solid. So it could be the flasher. We have some type of parasitic power to that, that circuit. The other thing it could be obviously is a ground. That's usually the most common. Let's check the flashers first. That's the easiest thing. And we'll pull the flashers and see if those tail lights turn off. I don't know if you could see on the camera, but when I was in here trying to take the fuse panel cover off, I noticed the light was blinking on the trailer brake controller. So I wiggled the wires and the light turned off. And just out of curiosity, I was like, oh, maybe that was it. So I checked the tail lights and sure enough, they turned off. They're working how they should now. So I don't know if that was the real issue or if somehow, I don't know. I'm guessing this issue is not fixed, but for now it is. I'm going to leave it be for right now though because I just needed it fixed so I can keep driving the truck. I'm daily driving the truck right now even though it's winter. I have to drive it right now because I'm trying to sell my daily driver car. So let's get on to the next thing. We need to change the oil and then while the oil is being changed, it's been about a year since we did the G56 swap. Anytime you do a major swap like that, for example when I built the crew cab and did the crew cab swap, within that first year you should go through and check pretty much every nut and bolt and make sure nothing's loosening up. And I guarantee we're gonna find some stuff on the transmission mount, the drive line, something that's loosening up. So we gotta go through and retighten everything, make sure everything's holding on fine. This is just something I do when I do a major swap like that. Case in point right here, guys. So we did the turbo, I don't know, four or five months ago, and look, our turbo feed line is leaking. So we need to address that. It's probably just loose, probably just needs to be tightened. The other thing I noticed, one of our exhaust manifold bolts is gone. This is what I'm saying, anytime you do some of these upgrades and put new hardware in and stuff, you've gotta go back and check it. So we're gonna go through everything, engine and transmission, drivetrain, drive lines, everything, and make sure everything's still snug and tight. If we're missing anything, we're gonna replace those bolts, get everything put back how it should be.
Okay, we got our new exhaust bolt in. We got our oil feed line. I pulled it out, cleaned it up, cleaned the threads. If it leaks again, I'm just gonna order a new oil feed line. So let's get the oil filter put on, fill it with oil, and then we'll go through and check all the nuts and bolts everywhere we can. So I thought it was the trailer brake controller, but uh, a couple hours later I came out and the lights were on again. So we've got something weird going on. I pulled the flasher relays and nothing changed there. And so with the trailer brake controller kind of at least affecting the issue, I started to wonder maybe it's something with the trailer wiring. And so then I remembered something. Let me show you something about the back of the truck. So some of you may remember I did my trailer um, plug wiring really nice, but I never hooked my second plug to this other piece coming out and it's not looking very good. So I'm wondering if this corrosion is causing this stuff to short out here. So what I'm gonna do is cut, a, cut this, make it fresh and then uh, test it out, and if that works, we'll figure out a solution from there. Okay, I cut it off, all the corrosion's gone, so let's hook up the battery and see if the lights stay on. Well, I've got this pulled apart because I was back here looking at the bulbs and stuff, but the light is off. Let's check the flashers. Those are working how they're supposed to. Okay, check the turn signals. Boom. Boom. So that seems to have fixed it. But now we have to figure out a way to not let that happen again. I'm not ready to put the plug on yet on that one, but I think I have an idea. So here's what I'm thinking. I got a candle from inside. We're gonna dip that end in the wax to keep any water and corrosion off of it until I'm ready to put that plug back on. All right, there we go. We got it waxed on the end. So we'll see how well that holds up, but I should probably plan on getting the plug put on this. This one goes to a plug that I have in the bed for when I hook a fifth wheel up to it. So I just need to hook it up. I've already got the plug. So it's crazy to think that this caused so many issues, but I'm glad we found it. The weather has taken a turn for the worst. It's dumping rain out of nowhere, but we're still gonna climb under the truck and check all the nuts and bolts and see what needs to be tightened, see if there's anything missing so we can get that taken care of. All right, so a couple things I found. First thing's right here. One of the cross member bolts is gone right there. Perfect example, those things were torqued to over 100 foot pounds and one of them's gone. The other thing, now I'm not gonna address this right now, but it looks like we've got a little leak between our transmission and our transfer case. 
we'll cross that bridge another day but besides that everything else looks good and tight good and tight so I'm actually pretty surprised that this is the only thing that's uh, needs to be addressed so luckily I've got a whole bag of extra crossmember bolts so I'll get that taken care of but the lesson is if you do any upgrades if you change anything you need to go through probably between 6 and 12 months after you do it and see what has loosened these Cummins rumble you guys know that and that loosens hardware so make sure you go check it and make sure everything's still tight so now I need your help on Long Bed Larry. Next video, we're gonna be trying to figure out the rear spring setup. I'll show you that in a minute. But up front we have these springs. I don't know if they're stock. I think they are stock, but they're an aftermarket version. Uh, and then we've got these Jungle Gym extended shackles. We've got this Jungle Gym drop hanger up front. So I don't know how much lift is up here, but let me show you what's going on in the back. So this is what we've got going on in the rear. We've got a four inch block and looks like a two and a half inch block. I think these are stock Dodge rear springs. But even with this setup, the rear sits a couple inches lower than the front. So what I'm trying to decide, do I go with like some Skyjacker six inch or eight inch lift springs? Or do I go with and remount the shackle hangers and do some 64 inch Chevy springs and figure that out? So. Let me know what you guys think. I need your help. I'm not a suspension expert. Make sure you go check out decentgarage.com. I put a bunch of new hats on there, different stitch colors, different colors of hats. If there's anything that's not on there that you'd like to see on there, let me know. I'm willing to put anything on there if you guys would want it. So we got a ton done in today's video. We got the oil changed. We figured out that weird electrical issue. We went through, inspected all the hardware from the swap, got everything tightened up, rebolted down. So we're good to go. Next video, like I said, we're gonna be on Long Bed Larry. We're gonna try and get the bed removed and work on the rear suspension, maybe get into some brake lines. Thanks for your support, thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you guys in the next one.